This is going to be a study on the topic of can you refute doctrine by exposing the sins of the teacher or the preacher. A mark of a Pharisee is someone who goes around finding fault and digging up the sins of others. You see this a lot today. Someone hears a preacher or a teacher, they find out they don't like their doctrine, and they'll begin to find fault with the person, maybe Google them, research their life, dig up dirt on them, maybe not even them, maybe on their family member. So is that a good way to teach against someone's doctrine? Is it is to to dig up dirt on them and look for the sins in their life? That's a horrible way, and I'm going to tell you why. But you're acting like a Pharisee when you just go around trying to dig up dirt on somebody and find fault with somebody. That's what the Pharisees did in Mark chapter 7 and verse 2. And when they saw some of his disciples, talking about Jesus' disciples, eat with bread, eat bread with the five, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. So people's just going to see your doctrine. If they don't like it, they're going to find something in your life that they can say, hey, you shouldn't listen to him because of this, 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 or this. So can you refute a doctrine you don't agree with by examining another preacher's life or teacher's life? By digging up dirt on his past and using it against him. Can you do that? For example, can a man teach against dispensational truth by exposing the sins of C.I. Schofield or John Darby or Peter Ruckman? To, to use their, the sins of those people's life to refute dispensationalism is very dumb. And looking at it the other way, to show you I'm unbiased, can you disprove a post-trib pre-wrath rapture by examining the life of the preachers and the new IFME, such as Stephen Anderson? You know, a lot of people saying stuff about his kids lately, bringing up his sin, and it's kind of like they're using that to say, see, he is wrong on stuff. Look at what his kids are doing. What do his kids have to do with what he's teaching? Or could I completely throw away all Baptists after examining the life of a failed Baptist preacher. If I see on the news a Baptist pastor just molested somebody, does that mean all Baptists are wrong? No, that's very dumb. So can you refute their doctrine simply by exposing their sin or by exposing other false doctrines they have? No, just because someone has false doctrine doesn't mean every single thing that they teach is wrong. Does the fact that two of Peter Ruckman's wives deserted him, does that prove that what he taught was false doctrine? Absolutely not. What does the sin of Ruckman's wives have to do with the doctrine of dispensationalism or the pre-tribulation rapture? There are plenty of other men who teach dispensationalism and a pre-tribulation rapture who have never been divorced. Does the fact that C.I. Schofield was divorced and remarried mean we can use that to prove his doctrine? is not correct or that we shouldn't use his reference Bible. The unpardonable sin among many Baptist Pharisees is divorce and remarriage. The Pharisee loves to ask questions on divorce and remarriage. What does divorce and remarriage have to do with dispensationalism? Does the fact that Schofield had a divorce prove all of his doctrines wrong? No, it has nothing to do with it. So here are some Bible examples of men who sinned majorly in their life, yet you're not going to throw out what they said. For example, David. In 1 Kings 15 and verse 5, it says, Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. You know the story. David saw Bathsheba lusted after her. He committed adultery with another man's wife and then had her husband killed to cover up her pregnancy. He, he had her husband killed to cover up the adultery. So you see there, uh, you don't throw out everything David said. David's a man after God's own heart. Look what he did. He committed adultery and murder. Does, every, does that mean that he's wrong on everything? Absolutely not. Another one, Solomon. In 1 Kings eleven seven through 9, Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem. 
and for Molech the abomination of the children of Ammon, and likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burn incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. So Solomon, the wisest man, messed up. Are you going to throw out what Solomon said because he did some very, very wicked and evil things? Absolutely not. Or Moses. Moses, he disobeyed God. Remember what he did with the rock? He smote the rock twice. Uh, Moses killed, killed a man. Um, Abraham lied about his wife. Isaac l lied about his wife. Samson went after wild women. Peter denied the Lord three times. Peter rebuked Jesus Christ to his face. Uh, do the writings or accomplishments of these men all become void because of their sins or because of the smudges on their record? Absolutely not. Noah got drunk, but he was called a preacher of righteousness in 2 Peter 2.5. David committed adultery and murder, but it was still after a man after God's own heart, says Acts 13.22. Men are sinners. Teachers and preachers are sinners. It's stupidity to try and disprove a doctrine by exposing the personal sins or bad circumstances in the preacher's life who teaches the doctrine that you don't approve of. I'm not going to look at Stephen Anderson's kids and say everything he teaches is wrong because of his kids. You got to watch watch out about that examining someone's kids and then saying that they're not qualified. Because sometimes you can be doing everything right, but your kids still have a free will. You can't stop them from choosing evil. You can highly influence them, but you can't stop them. It's stupidity to try, try and disprove a doctrine by exposing the personal sins or bad circumstances in the life of a preacher who teaches the doctrine that you don't like. They try to teach against dispensationalism and a preacher of rapture by mentioning the sins of Ruckman's children. In that documentary they had against dispensationalism, they had a whole, you know, ten minutes examining the life of his kid, which has nothing to do with dispensationalism. Uh, they try to disprove dispensationalism by mentioning that Darby was a Bible corrector. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. If Darby corrected the book, he's doing nothing but showing he's a liar. But that doesn't mean dispensationalism is wrong just because a Bible corrector was also a dispensationalist. Just like Bible correctors believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. Um, does that mean the deity of Christ isn't right? Of course it's right. Schofield corrected the Bible, but that doesn't mean he was wrong on dispensationalism or the Godhead or all the other things that he was right about. Does it doesn't it doesn't mean every single thing a man says is wrong if he's wrong on something. Just because you're wrong on something doesn't mean you're wrong on everything. But these type of arguments are stupid and are only thrown in because they don't have any real scripture to disprove anything. They can't disprove dispensationalism, so they have to attack the personal lives of dispensationalists. And the only people who take these attacks seriously are newly saved babes in Christ and men who already have their mind made up against whoever the man is that's being talked against. Uh, Pharisees are liars they're fault finders who can do nothing but dig up dirt on other Christians to make themselves feel more spiritual and more sophisticated and look better on their way to becoming the greatest. That's what it's all about. They want to be the greatest. They see all these other people successful, have followers. They're jealous. They want to be the greatest. It's all about being like Diotrephes who loveth to have the preeminence. But these puffed up Pharisee pastors claim that Schofield and Ruckman are false teachers who believe works played a part in other dispensations. However, these same puffed up pastors teach works in this dispensation. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, If you like Peter Ruckman or are a fan of Peter Ruckman, then you're not saved. So he's saying, If you like Peter Ruckman or people like him, then you're not saved. Talk about adding a work to the gospel.
So it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and don't be a fan of a preacher who wasn't even born until the 1920s. But don't forget that Pharisees are also called hypocrites by Jesus Christ. One of these other puffed up pastors said in the same breath that Phil Kidd isn't saved, Lester Roloff isn't saved, this guy isn't saved. I mean, attacking Lester Roloff? Come on. How are you going to say Phil Kidd and Lester Roloff aren't saved? Aren't you glad that the Lord has raised up these young prophets to tell us who's going to heaven and who ain't going to heaven? In these last days here, he's raised up these young 30-something-year-old prophets who's going to tell us what we've been teaching wrong for the entire time of church history. Something ain't right about that. So, can you refute a doctrine by making fun of how the teacher looks. I've recently heard somebody refuting doctrine by making fun of the, the person teaching it. That's stupid. But since these puffed up pastors had nowhere to go to disprove dispensationalism and the preacher of rapture, they had to make fun of the appearance of the teachers. They said Robert Breaker looks like a chipmunk. Making fun of him. They said Andrew Schluter looks like a dyke. This is nothing but just immature babies that are just saying stuff because they don't have any verses to disprove anything. It's uh, it's just a mess that you, you look at a lot of stuff, especially on YouTube, it's a mess because they're just going around. Every video has a person's name in it that they're criticizing and finding fault with every single one you know why it's because people love drama so drama gets views and people are trying to be the greatest it doesn't matter how a person looks if you're looking at a person how god looks at them then look at the heart of a person are they good people are they trying to live right do they act like they love the lord the look don't matter as it says in first samuel sixteen seven. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. But when I see these teachers or preachers who just every single video or every single sermon at their church is criticism, finding fault, talking about how right they are compared to how everybody else, and just sitting around arguing about who's right and who's wrong, they're wasting your time. It's a big waste of time. I would just get as far away from that as I could. And just... Study the Bible, read the Bible, listen to people that are actually teaching the Bible and not just teaching against everybody in the world. Did you notice how it's like some people, they think that they're the only one that's not a false prophet. You I mean, you can't think of a preacher that they've not said something bad about or that they're not against or that they've not pointed out as being lost. But this is just something I noticed recently and wanted to share it with you, get it off my mind about how you can't refute doctrines by exposing the sins of the teacher or preacher. I mean, you have to go to the Bible. Someone is wrong because they're going against what the Bible says, not because they've sinned, because we've all sinned. I mean, you can look at my life. I'm a sinner. I've sinned since the moment I was born. If, if being a sinner meant that what you're teaching is wrong, then I must be the biggest heretic in the whole world. Same goes for any, anybody. You can look at their life or the life of their wife or their kid. You can't say somebody's wrong just because there's some bad apples in their life. I mean, with Jesus, all of his disciples didn't do right all the time. And then Judas, he had a Judas... Everybody's going to have a Judas. You know, if somebody has ten kids, or even five kids, and I mean, one of them's bound to turn out wrong. So, you got to watch all the judgment you're putting on people. Got to watch out being so hard on people all the time. People are just too hard on people today. I'm all for being against sin, teaching against sin. Telling what the Bible says is sin. But when all you're doing is judging everybody. And, and, and when your prayer at the end of your sermon ends with, 
God, we thank you so much that we're not like these people that we just discussed today or something like that. That's very, that's what the Pharisee did. But just, you need to learn how to get along with other people. You need to learn how to deal with disagreements. Disagreements.